So you're thinking about living off grid or changing up your lifestyle, but you're probably stuck because it's so overwhelming and there's so many questions like, where will you get your food? How much of it will you raise? Can you buy it? Will you ever be warm again or will you be freezing for the rest of your life? I can tell you what, my life has been great. My only regret is not doing it sooner. So I'm going to see if I can help alleviate some of those fears and questions and help you to make some, uh, <laughs> help you to make some uh, progress in getting started. And it looks like I got my film crew here with me. So in my opinion, the first question that you want to ask and answer for yourself is what kind of lifestyle do you want? The way that I look at it is there's kind of a spectrum you can use that on one end is say the homesteading crowd that uh, they buy a piece of land, they get animals and they raise food and they work non-stop but they uh, create for themselves a uh, self-reliant lifestyle where if society collapses or if SHTF comes along their lives won't be upset too badly and hopefully they can even help some of their neighbors and then on the other end of the spectrum would be uh, in my opinion something like van life where you're minimal lifestyle you don't need land you're just kind of traveling around and enjoying what the world has to offer and most likely living remotely or you're adept at picking up odd jobs and uh, just kind of funding your way as you go somewhere in between there is where you'll start most likely and um, knowing which direction you want to go is important uh, to answer. A lot of people ask about buying land. Personally, I wouldn't even have land if I didn't have my horses. Me and my dogs would just be cruising the country and staying at all the best, uh, most beautiful places that nature has to offer, as well as visiting a lot of people. I get uh, offers to go hunting and uh, fishing and camping with people in various uh, areas and man I would love to be doing that. But I can't say it's really bad hanging out here. Something I'd like to say that'll hopefully encourage people or um, empower them is that uh, it could be overwhelming when you're talking with uh, people on forums and hearing from the people who are just rocking it or watching the videos and just seeing the best of their life. And I'll tell you what, the best thing that I ever did was just start it out gradually. I just decided, you know what? I'm not gonna try to have it all together at once. I'm just gonna start. For me, it was kinda easier and I've got an opinion to make it easier for you. I had bought 20 acres out here years ago and I owned a house in town and then one year I uh, I bought an RV and then went on a trip to Texas and when I got back I decided you know what I don't want it to end so I parked it out here at my property and started staying but I was able to go in in town I mean I had to still work uh, occasionally too but I was able to gradually start staying at my RV more and more and on my trip to Texas I was able to experiment with things, you know, a lot of it's uh, toilet system and uh, cooking. So for me, gradual worked in an awesome way. And for me also, when watching those videos, it just seems like, oh, I gotta have all of this stuff. You watch these videos, it says the 10 things you can't do without. But a lot of that's BS. Um, and a great example is a composting toilet. Near as I can tell, those are like $800 and up. Well, my toilet costs me about seven bucks and it's the best that I've come across. So I'll do future videos talking about that specifically, but um, that's just an example of just get out and do it your way. And that's part of the fun. I'm not telling you how to do it. All I wanna do is give you ideas 
that you can uh, start using in your head to decide, you know what, this is how I'm going to do it. Because that's, that's the fun, is just going out and creating a lifestyle apart from society. They can have their stress. They can have their mental issues. Out here, I'm doing things the way I want to, the way that works with my life. And I've only been getting better and better uh, the five years I've been out here now, something like that. So one thing that I ran into personally, and you might run into, I was really used to my regular stops in town. I love the Mexican bakeries for my donuts. I love my coffee. And part of the fun of life for me in town was uh, making my regular stops. And um, when I started transitioning out here, I actually found it really difficult to just kind of relax and know that I had food and that I had what I needed. I just always had this upset feeling that, oh, I gotta get the town stock up. And, and truly, there was a long time of figuring out, oh, this is what I need. And I didn't stock up on that. And um, that made it kind of difficult. So those two things compounded together, some of it justified, some of it just kind of antsiness. Uh, it took a long time before I was able to relax and not be going into town all the time. Uh, but now I'm way more confident. I could stay out here for two weeks, three weeks. I uh, want to get snowed in. So um, that was a transition for me. And uh, a tip that I have on that is even if you're in town, start preparing now. When I lived in a house, I watched. I started watching my patterns, and you can do this, watch your patterns of what you use. And I'd sit there in my big living room thinking, you know what, I use the same chair by the wood stove all the time. In my bedroom, all I use that for is sleeping and hanging my clothes. I use my kitchen to store food and to cook, and I use my bathroom. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I don't need all that space. I'm watching my patterns. All I need is a chair, a bed, a place to hang clothes, a place to store food, and a place to um, shower and go number two. This is, number one's pretty easy for a guy. Nowadays, I'm at the point where I could live comfortably in eight by 12. I mean, I could do it smaller if I really had to, but, uh, 8x12 is my goal. I've got a trailer that I'm probably going to build up eventually for a permanent home. So watch your patterns and start to realize uh, what you need and what you don't need. And I tell you what, all that 2,700 square foot of home that I used to have for one guy, it's pointless to be heating all of that and cleaning all of that and remodeling all of that. Anyway, that's my opinion. Uh, food habits also i'm i'm pretty fortunate in that i can eat the same foods day in and day out for almost years on end i'll switch them up occasionally and um so i started watching my food patterns and now i'm pretty good at, to the point where i can stock up for a year at a time because i know this is all i need just my olive oil my flour um, I've got eggs from chickens, um, uh, just stuff like that. Stuff that I know that this is all I need to eat on a regular basis because I've got it nailed down pretty good. So that's stuff you can do before you ever even uh, leave or even before you decide what kind of lifestyle you want. Maybe you start analyzing what you need and what you don't need in your life. And that comes to my next point of use less, need less, spend less. I think a big part of this is simplifying your life and finding real life. I'll kind of avoid a lot of the philosophizing, but uh, this is true freedom out here. And, um, and that's, ironically, that's found by spending less money and, uh, and needing needing less, telling yourself you don't need everything that you thought you did or that society tells you that you think you need, and, um, and using less. So uh, that's a few principles to work off of. It's amazing. 
I've uh, just cut my budget down more and more and more. I thought I couldn't ever get away from paying for YouTube. And uh, now I just turn down the volume on the ads, crank it back up as soon as they're over. And uh, it's kind of annoying, but that's just an example. That's an uh, expense that is pretty easy to cut out. And it's amazing how many expenses like that I was um, paying for and thought I needed to do. So my budget's pretty low. I'm at about 8,000 bucks a year that is all I need. And a lot of that's just because of my land and horses. If it weren't for that, I could live off of a few hundred a year with the food gathering and raising animals that I've got. So future videos that I'm gonna talk about are, if there's interest in all this, is uh, the essentials of life, what we need. I categorize it by shelter, food, water, Within shelter, there is shelter from the environment, whether it is clothing on the body or the home that you decide to live in. And then with that is, how do you heat it? Uh, firewood is my primary source. And uh, after that is food. Are you gonna raise your food? Are you gonna buy it? Is it gonna be a combination? And are you gonna eat? animals and uh, how are you going to get vegetables, you're going to forage, you're going to raise a garden. I'll talk, uh, get into more specifics on that. Um, oh yeah, I was categorizing. So there's uh, shelter, which is body and home. There's food, there's water, and then you'll probably need an income. And I've got some ideas to share on that too. So folks, I hope this is helpful. Let me know if it is. If it's not, if I don't get a lot of positive comments, I will drop this series. So um, my goal is just kind of let people realize that this lifestyle is within their reach and to help embolden them to uh, get out and start on it. So I'm getting really cold. So I'm gonna go back inside where I got some chicken frying and a good warm fire going and i uh, hope to hear from you guys in the comments talk to you later